Hello and welcome back to the Ground Up Advanced Flight Tutorials. Hopefully you guys have been watching the last episodes and if not and you're just joining me in this episode, I highly, highly recommend that you do go watch the previous episodes because in today's video, in today's lesson, we're going to be doing a full flight across the country. Um, some 100 nautical miles or so is what we're going to be traveling. Uh, maybe not 100, maybe maybe 80 nautical miles or 90 nautical miles but we are going to be traveling in and around and we're not going to be traveling just in a straight line from point a to point b we're going to be using vors we're going to be using intersections which i'll be explaining once we're in the air we're going to be using almost real life ifr flying and then we're going to switch off and then fly our own fly our own ifr path as and when we go before I continue, of course, uh, if you are liking these videos, please do remember to hit that like button, to subscribe and share, to comment in the videos, and please support me on Patreon. Link to that is in the description box below, and any amount that you do support will give you access to the Discord server where you can see what I'm getting up to next. Uh, with that out the way, I am going to, during this flight, be talking about all the previous lessons and what we've learned, so there is going to be some sort of recap on there, but if you're not familiar with all the likes of the six pack climbing uh, stable level flight uh, if you're not familiar with tuning VORs flying inbound or outbound radials ADFs ILS landings stuff like that what the localizer is what the glide slope is how to turn an aircraft how to descend a circuit please do go check all the previous videos because it's all explained in there with that all out the way, don't want to spend too much time on the ground. We're going to get up in the air very, very shortly. I'm just going to go for a very quick flight briefing and then set up our radios. Um, today, we're going to be taking off from this airport over here. This is not the airport we've been flying at normally. This is Echo Golf, Bravo Echo. This is Coventry Airport, not East Midlands. Not too far, but the reason I've chosen this is because it's got a different setup. I want you guys to get used to flying out in and out of different airports as opposed to the same one every single time. We're set up on runway 23 here, so we're going to be taking off from runway 23 and then we're going to be joining the 091 radial outbound from Honolulu VOR. And that's actually going to be on a on a flight route, which is the P155 airway, the Papa 155 airway. We're going to follow that for 26 nautical miles, I believe. It might be a bit more than 26 nautical miles until we get to the Iboto intersection. The Iboto intersection is an intersection where it where the 091 radial from Honolulu intersects with the 33 radial 330 radial sorry out of Brookman's Park and that is where we're going to be turning we're going to be following the 330 radial out of Brookman's Park which is the November 601 airway we're going to be following that for approximately 59 until it shows 59 nautical miles on the DME so we're going to be using this DME so it shows 59 nautical miles it's actually going to be we're going to be on that for about 20 I think 26 miles is what we're actually going to be on that for. And then we're going to turn left heading 360 and that's actually going to be following the 360 radial outbound from Daventry. Uh, so we're going to be using the Daventry VOR until we intersect the 090 radial outbound from Trent and then we're going to turn and join join that and then follow the 090 radial outbound from Trent. We're then going to follow that until we intersect with the 180 radial from, uh, what's it called, Gamston? I think it's called Gamston. Uh, just going to double check that I've got that right. Check the spelling of that to make sure I have got that right. It is Gamston. Yes, we're going to be looking at Gamston. Now, I don't know whether this VOR actually works. I don't know whether it's operational. And if it's not, we're going to have to make a slight change in plans. But it shouldn't be too bad at all. Uh, we'll be we'll be looking at something like um, about 25... Yeah, I'd say about 25 nautical miles from the Trent uh, DME is where we're going to be crossing the 180 radial from Gamston. And then at that point, we're going to follow the ADF to Echo Golf Yankee Delta, which is an RAF base. We're going to RAF Cranwell. And then we're going to join a circuit around RAF Cranwell, get ourselves set up on the ILS, and we're going to land at runway 26. Very, very simple. That's what we're going to be doing. So let's get ourselves ready to go. The first one we're going to need is going to be uh, Honolulu. So we're going to set up Honolulu over on... 
Let's see. Let's go Honolulu on this one over here. So Honolulu is 113.65. So let's get that put in. 113.65. We should see this move. There you go. That's moved. We're going to set this up to the 091. And we're going to follow the 091 outbound radio. So let's go for 0. Uh, if it's going to be 091 outbound radio, that means that uh technically we want to let's think we're going to want to fly this on 270 yeah the 091 outbound radial means we've got to go 271 271 is what we're going to do so we're going to fly and then turn to no actually i'm i'm wrong there no we are going to actually do what i thought we were going to do originally it is 091 we're going to be turning to fly 091 away from the VOR so we're going to go up and then we're going to be turning essentially we're going to be turning left I believe to get on the outbound radial for that no problems there all right uh, the next one we're going to tune up is going to be we might as well actually we don't need to tune this up just yet we'll do that once we are in the air I might be using autopilot today so if we if I'm using the autopilot feel free to also use the autopilot system my one's a little bit different just make sure you've got it in nav mode when you're actually doing this uh, not heading hold because if you've got any winds or anything which I have today we're going to be drifting a little bit I might use the autopilot for a certain period of time we'll have to see let's uh, check that on the dme there you go 7.2 nautical miles from honley honley is actually just over there so we're not far away from it at all right uh we've got that set up we've got that set up flaps down make sure all our lights are on they are all on peter heats on fuel pump is on uh landing lights are on mixture is full rich mixture of mixture is full rich check those flaps Yep, definitely where I need them. Awesome. I'm also going to set up a timer on here and start it, just so I can see what exactly we're doing. Uh, we'll get rid of that for now, and we're going to do a takeoff and joining of that. Today we're going to climb up to about 3,000 feet as well. So here we go. Don't forget that rudder. Brilliant. My rotate speed today, as usual, is going to be around 75 knots. So at 75 knots, I will be rotating the aircraft and getting ourselves up in the air. There's 75. Up we go. Positive rate for me. Flaps in. Gear up. A little bit breezy. Going to maintain runway heading until we join that radio. Already trimming the aircraft for a climb. We're almost on the radial. Just gonna wait just a little bit longer. And turning to join the radial now. Nice sharp turn here. almost 30 degrees off bank and start rolling the aircraft out nice and slowly to around 091 now what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that we get ourselves on the radial correctly so I'm going to let the aircraft fly 090 for now and then get back onto the radial to 091 there we go. So now we're going to follow this for a little bit of uh, a short while. It's not going to be too far. I think, like I said, it's going to be some 26 to 30 miles or so. I'm back on the radial now. So now to move to 091. And I am actually at this point going to put the autopilot into nav mode. Uh, is that nav mode? Just to make sure. That's nav mode. Switch the autopilot on. Heading hold on. No, not heading hold. I want that in nav mode. Uh, 
Your autopilot may be different. Unfortunately, I can't really give you information on your actual autopilot. Um, but my autopilot is not actually working right now. Oops. That's fine. We're going to continue our climb. We can manage this ourselves. It's no big deal. I have to press heading hold on. I don't know. I'm just going to find out what this is doing. At this point in time. Is it just going to sway away or what? I'm just testing something. No, it is swaying away. That's no good. All right, I'll do this manually myself. Great. Or even put it into heading hold. Yeah, it wants to do heading hold. Right, that's fine. As long as it wants to do heading hold, I'm okay. I'll switch. I'll swing that back around, and we'll we'll manage ourselves like this. All right, so once we're once we're up and going, we're we're almost at two thousand feet here, as you can see. Swing that back, get ourselves generally on that VOR. So, like I said, we're following the uh, Papa one five five. We're following the Papa one five five outbound airway. We're going to tune up Brookman's Park now. Now, Brookman's Park is going to be one one seven point five. So we're going to tune that up over here, 117.5 on this, and then we're going to actually set this up for 330. There we go. We can take a listen to this now to have a make sure that we've got the right, uh, make sure we've got the right beacon. That's the frequency for it. So what you're listening for is a dash followed by three dots, then a dot dash dash dot then a dash dot dash. So I'll leave it on again so you can hear it. That works for me. So that's brilliant. Okay, so once we get onto the Brookman's Park radial, the next one we're going to be looking for is Daventry, and we're going to put Daventry down on here. Hopefully, you maybe you guys have picked a, a clearer weather. If you've picked a clearer weather, then you're not going to probably need the autopilot at all. I'm going to actually drop the mixture very slightly. So, like I explained when I was talking about mixtures, I haven't shown exactly how to do this and how it works, but I did explain that uh, it's... I'm actually going to bring the propeller control down as well. It's all about um, having the air and the fuel ratio correct, so that you're not, you're not putting too much effort and too much force on the engine and using too much fuel. So as we get up to 3,000 feet, I am going to start leveling off. So we've had a nice climb. I'm still flying this aircraft or hold maintaining the altitude on my own. And I'm probably going to continue to do so. I'm not going to use the uh, altitude hold because the real aircraft doesn't have one. As I, as I mentioned when I was reviewing this aircraft uh, for flights in for flights in world, but there is a button that you can press there that does it, and I believe it does the same in X plane. So it's got the same sort of setup. Uh, yes, I know it's complaining about that. That's fine. And we're at three thousand feet. There we go. So we're just going to stabilize ourselves and stabilize ourselves at three thousand feet. Great. So far a good flight, so far we're doing pretty well. And we are now starting to use, like I said, autopilot systems just in their very base form. We're using the heading hold. Um, yes, yes, yes. And if you're getting that warning, um, if you're in an ESP sim, you can press Control and X to have it set up the mixture to where it wants it to be. So you can feel free to go ahead and do that. I'm actually going to be reducing the propeller speed now. 
Now, you might want to be doing the same. However, do be aware that in doing so, when it comes to landing, make sure you bring that propeller back up to speed. And there we go. Just cruising along very, very nicely now. So don't forget we're waiting for the intersection. So on this, we're looking for that to start swinging in. That's going to start swinging in. We're going to be turning to a heading of 330, which is that way. So it's going to be quite, uh, quite a move. It's going to be quite a turn and we're going to try and get uh, 20 degrees of bank on that turn. As soon as we do that, we're going to be tuning in another VOR because it's not going to be far and, uh, to the next VOR. Like I said, it's not going to be too far at all to the next VOR and we're going to have to join and we're going to be going up to the Leicester intersection. And at that point, we're going to be turning due north on, uh, it's not going to be on a, on an airway. We're not going to be flying on an airway any longer. We're just going to be following the VOR out until we intersect with another VOR and then another VOR. So this is how you fly IFR. This is basically how you fly IFR. For now, we're maintaining a certain range. We're maintaining a, I mean, we're maintaining a certain standard by sticking to the low altitude airways. That actually wouldn't be probably used at this low altitude. But, um, you know, I just want to show that they can be used. You see, we're 20.8 nautical miles, or we're 21 nautical miles away from the Honolulu VOR. Which means we're not all too far away from our intersection. The intersection itself is... Uh, 30 42 42 is 42 nautical miles away from Brooklyn's Park so if we switch to that you can see that's at 50.8 and reducing let me zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better there you go 50.7 and closing so you can see that that is reducing quite a bit and it's going to go down to 40 it's going to go down to 42 and that's actually where the intersection is going to be one way down to 42 on that but we don't have to worry about that just yet at the moment we're just looking for this to go to about like i said 26 27 it is a little bit breezy you can see the aircraft is moving around quite a bit that's a good screenshot. You can just see how much the aircraft is wobbling around, but it's very nice to fly. It's a very good flight. And like I said, if you've chosen clearer weather, then you're going to be you're going to be enjoying it more than I do. I, I can tell you that for certain. I'm going to leave it like that so I can actually I'm going to leave it like that so I can see what I'm doing. As As G-Force decides to tell me that there's a game-ready drive available, that's what the few second gap was. Hopefully that doesn't affect anything. Shouldn't affect anything. I need to switch that off. That was annoying. So it's a very easy flight now. Make sure, like I said, you're, you're easing up on the propeller. You're easing up on the mixture. We don't want to... We don't want to be pushing too much on these and giving it, putting undue stress on these. I explained this, I'm not going to be explaining that one too much in this episode at all. In fact, I'm not going to explain uh, the propeller and mixture controls at all. What I am going to do though, is I'm going to have a recap now for all of what we have done. Um, because I think it's a, I think a recap's a good, yeah, we've got a, a couple of minutes so I can recap the first, I can recap the first one, which is um, our first lesson we covered the six pack. So we looked at this, we talked about what the green band was, the yellow, so the safe operating or normal operating range, the caution operating range or abnormal operating range, the VNE, which is the velocity never exceed, 
Uh, then we had a look at the flap operating range, which is on this aircraft is from 55 knots to 104 knots. How that works and why you can only have flaps at certain at certain uh, speeds because of induced drag or damage to the flaps, so on and so forth. We also had a look at this turn coordinator, which we're about to use again in a few moments. The turn coordinator, sorry, down here, and the attitude indicator, which, as I said, is 10, 20, 30, 60, and 90 in either direction, as well as an artificial horizon. We've also got the turn coordinator, which, as you can see, is wobbling slightly with the spirit level wobbling, showing as our center of gravity and center of mass shift around. That that allows us to stop the aircraft from going into a no spin or a tail spin by ensuring that we keep that ball in the middle whilst we are doing our turn. So it's very, very, very clever bits of kit over here. Uh, we looked at the altimeter, which is very, very easy to understand. Uh, the it's like a clock, so that's the hundreds of units, that's the thousands of units. So we are at just about 3,000 feet, 2,985 feet. We also had the barometric pressure on that, so we have to look at the barometric pressure, um, which allows us to tune up. So, in fact, I didn't, yes, I had that tuned up correctly. Um, that tells us what the outside pressure is, and that allows us to have these instruments correctly set up. Uh, we had a look at the vertical speed indicator, which tells us whether we're going up or down in increments on this one of 100 foot per minute. So you can see that that's 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 feet per minute up and down and at the moment we are pretty much on zero that's not going to remain the case though as we turn in a few seconds because as you can see that VOR needle the course deviation indicator is now coming towards the middle this is our compass card our heading indicator essentially that's just telling us which direction our nose of the plane is facing uh, so at the moment we're facing 091 we are going to be turning very very soon I'm actually going to switch off heading hold for this and I'm going to do this myself. Which isn't, it's not all too happy with this right now. That's okay. I think because it's trying to. Yeah, I'm going to switch the. I'll do that. That should probably do the trick. There we go. Alright, and I'm going to begin the turn now. 2330. Whilst trying to maintain the vertical speed and keep it as close to zero as we can there we go nice and smooth that's the key here got to keep it all very smooth pulling up on the yoke ever so slightly as I get to this turn we're now at 20 degrees of bank I'm quite happy with 20 degrees of bank here I'm going to actually leave it at 20 degrees of bank and perhaps correct ever so slightly as we bring it back down towards 20 degrees of bank. 2330, rolling out 10 degrees beforehand. Nice and smooth. And we are at 330. I'm actually going to let the aircraft just settle in to the new VOR. And we're going to now switch this to Nav 1 on the DME. We are good with that. And this is in nav one in fact that's probably why it wasn't holding the navigation correctly we're going to make sure that this is set up to 330 yes that was actually stuck on nav one and that's why it wasn't holding the uh, VOR as I wanted it to but that's okay now we are on a different radial we are on the 330 or we're going to be joining the 330 very very shortly so you can see that we've got an intercept angle of around 15 degrees and it's just going to do that until it's happy with it or it should be any moment now it's 330 right that is 330 just had to make sure as a matter of fact I'm going to actually switch this into heading hold and have this turn 2330 now. That's not what I meant to do. Uh oh. Yes. I know about that. That was my own mistake. And now I'll put it back into nav mode. Like so. It should work itself out. I'm just trying to help it along, which it's obviously not. It doesn't want. It doesn't want the help. 
So in fact, I am probably just going to go back into heading hold and put this at 330 myself. That's absolutely fine by me. Fantastic. Okay. I'm going to make sure that I retrim to make sure everything is going okay. We have dropped just a little bit. And we need to now tune our next VOR. So we're going to actually set this up. It's going to be the 360 radial we're looking for. So we need to set this to uh, zero. There we go. That's now set to zero. And we need to tune the Daventry VOR. So the next VOR we're tuning up is Daventry, which is going to be 116.4. So 116.4. Point four, and you'll see that swing over again. Now all we're going to do is just follow this along until we join it. You can see from Brooklyn's Park, we're, we're already 50.4 nautical miles away. All we need to do is we need to get, um, uh, it's another 26, I think 59, 59 nautical miles is what we're looking for. So we're only going to be following this for another nine miles or so. Yep, so it's going to be nine miles, we're already through. So we're looking for 59 nautical miles on here and that should be where this comes in to the zero point or the course deviation indicator tells us that we're completely on the course that we need to be. This is how easy this is. So we're flying around, we're just doing a, a proper IFR flight in and around. We're using the autopilot, we've got the propellers set, we've got the mixture set, everything is nice on our, on our aircraft. I should probably have switched that fuel pump off but that's okay. I'm actually going to I'm going to leave the landing light on uh, even though I really don't need it on but because we're flying through clouds it's probably a good idea to leave the landing light on for now I think it's quite happy with that if I was to switch this back into nav mode I wonder if it'll swing over probably will so I'm going to actually leave it like this the breeze is okay I don't have to do any heading corrections uh, as such, I may just, um, I think I've got myself a one degree heading correction as the wind blows ever so slightly, but it's not too bad at all. Hopefully you guys are following along very, very easily with this, and we don't have too much of the flight to go. Uh, we're actually, okay, there we go, here we go, now we've got a bit of turbulence. At this point, I'm going to take manual control of the aircraft until until we can bring it back. Now, I think this is a bug with this aircraft in itself. Your aircraft should not be doing this whatsoever. This is a bug in this aircraft, but I will maintain it myself, and it should be absolutely fine. Come on, come on aircraft. There you go, you settled in again. Happy? Switch it to nav mode. I think that's happy now. Okay, good. You guys may have noticed that this seems to happen a lot with this aircraft. I'm, I'm not entirely sure why, but um, there you go. I don't think you're actually doing what I want you to do, but um, you know I'm going to I'm going to trust it. We're almost at the Daventry intersection. We'll be there very shortly. Yeah, I genuinely do, do not think it's doing what I wanted to do. So, you know, so be it. We've only got a couple of miles to go. Now you're probably wondering why is this so far, so far over right now? It will, it will start swinging in very, very shortly. It's because of the angle of intercept that we've got. Because we're turning to a heading of 360, it's a 30 degree change that we're going to have, so it's not going to turn uh, for a little while. But it will start moving uh, any moment now. Like I said, we're looking for I think 59 miles in the DME that's where we're going to be at the right point so in fact we're, we're coming very close to it we are coming up very very close to it 
but uh, we'll just we'll just wait. We'll just follow procedure as it is. I can't because I can't see out the window. I can't tell where anything is. There's an airport right over there, which if I start looking at VFR charts, which uh, you may not have access to at the moment, but that's okay. It's not important for for you guys to be having a look at that just yet. Still not moving just yet. It's almost at 60 nautical miles. Perhaps my mathematics was a little bit off. I don't know. A good way for me to find out, though, is by... What am I going to do? Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's find out what, what radial we're on. We shouldn't be too far over. Okay, we're on the 14 degree radial. That's fine. We should be getting there very soon. Uh, what I'm going to do is, at this point, I'm actually going to uh, tune in an ADF that I wasn't going to tune in, just to check where we are. I'm going to tune in 850 if I can. That's the Cranfield ADF. 850. I just want to see if that picks it up and whether it knows what it's doing. No, apparently it doesn't want to pick up the Cranfield ADF. That should be behind us. Um, at, or at this point should be... Yeah, it should be just coming up quite behind us, actually. And it's not It's not wanting to pick that up. I am going to, though. I'll give you the ADF frequency for now for uh, Cranwell, RAF Cranwell, which is a 423. So let's tune in 423 and see if that picks up. If it doesn't, we're going to have to change... We're going to have to have a change of plans. Not that picked it up. Okay, so now we know which way RAF Cranwell is, but we don't have to worry about that just yet. Now, we've got the heading hole set up. This is about to start moving. As soon as that starts moving, we're going to set up the next VOR up on here, which is going to be the Trent VOR, which is 115.7. That one should be very familiar to you to you guys now. What, what are we on? nine degrees it's quite interesting so I'm going to actually set up the Trent VO on now which is uh, like I said 115.7 uh, 115 point come on seven there we go that should now come alive there we go and we're going to set that up for uh, zero nine zero there we go perfect you can see we're 33 nautical miles from Trent, but we're not going to Trent, so that doesn't really matter. If you look over here, we're 30 miles already from Daventry. So we are a little ways from the Daventry, from the Daventry VOR. So we're not actually flying VOR to VOR, we're actually doing a bit of a, a crossover here and there. And you can see at this point, we are climbing a little bit more than I want to. We're at 3,160 feet, so I'm just going to trim the nose down ever so slightly as we approach the Daventry intersection that we want, the Leicester intersection with Brookmans Park and Daventry. Now at this point, we're going to be jumping off the airways so from here we're actually going to be heading 360 we are going to be still following an outbound radial from a VOR but we are going to be off one of the standard airways so this one was the November 601 airway and now we're just going to be turning to head due north so a heading of 360 which is zero on the compass card and we're not going to be doing that for too long because it's only going to be a matter of uh, about maybe 15 miles uh, about maybe 15 miles or so uh, maybe 20 miles before we have to turn off once again and that's going to be as we start our approach to Cranwell at that point we're going to be reducing our we're going to be reducing our altitude to 2,000 feet as well and we're going to start bringing the mixture back up and we're going to start bringing the propeller speed or the propeller RPM back up as well in preparation for landing 
Hopefully you guys are enjoying this and getting a good understanding of how to fly using these various VOR techniques. Let's see some houses down below. We've got the city of Nottingham over there. We're going to actually be flying pretty close or if not over the city of Nottingham. And we didn't fly over the city of Coventry and there hasn't been many cities around the area that we've we've had a chance to fly over. Uh, there is the city of Leicester not far from here as well. In fact we might just pass over it but we are in clouds so we're not going to be able to really see whether or not we're going to be able to pass over it. Now because we're only doing a 30 degree intercept I don't have to worry too much about what we're actually doing and in the way in which we are flying so I'm not going to wait I'm going to wait until this is all the way almost all the way at that uh, sh straight line to actually turn onto that radial there of course is East Midlands Airport you see East Midlands Airport right over there and there's that power station so that's where we've been doing a lot of our work we've been doing all our practice all our training over there that there is the city of Leicester Yep, so that's, that's the city of Leicester right over there. Actually, that may be the city of, that may be the town of Loughborough. Leicester's just behind that. They're very close, everything's very close. That looks a lot bigger than it should be though, because Leicester doesn't go all the way out to there. It's not, not something it does. And that there is the city of Nottingham. And then over there, you might just be able to see that there that is the city of Derby so these are all landmarks to actually look out for various cities yet yeah, that's the city of Leicester behind us it was in we were in the clouds for most of it at this point if an aircraft was flying to land at East Midlands Airport it would be a lot it would be a lot lower and would already be turning in that's why we're maintaining this height because we are assuming that there are other aircraft that might be coming into this point at this point we are now going to turn to a heading of zero to join the correct radial out from Daventry and now we're going to fly right over the city of Nottingham and at this point aircraft would have been turning in on final to land at East Midlands Airport so they would have been already a lot lower and already turning in on final so you can see we're actually going to be crossing East Midlands Airport in a few seconds then you might be able to see it off the wing it depends on no I don't think we can see it off the wing in fact you can you can just see the terminal building and the runway as we buff it about in the little bit of turbulence And this also means that we're getting fairly close to our own destination. So we're going to now tune in the next one, which is going to be uh, Trent, which is going to be 115.7. We've already done that, actually. I forgot we've already done that. We're going to make sure that's set up for 90. So we're actually going to join this very, very soon. It's not that far after Nottingham. Uh, we're going to, it's probably going to be a few, a few miles, a few extra miles. switch this over to nav 2 and I'll show you we are 42 nautical miles away uh, the Leicester intersection was at um, in, just trying to work out it was at 33 nautical miles away so we are already pretty far from there as you can see but we're not too far from the Trent VR we are just literally going to fly over the city of Nottingham and then we're going to be turning as we pass the city and you guys will know that it's not too far away because from here it's only about a five minute journey before we used to make the turn when we were learning about VORs 
after taking off. So we take off from there, fly over this power station on one side, not directly over, on one side of that power station, and be about five minutes before we had to turn. So it's, it's going to be very similar to that. Of course, this is a cross-country flight, and that's why it's taking such, a, uh, such an amount of time. And uh, we'll be doing a few more like this, actually. A few more flights like this, understanding, uh, getting to grips, for example, more with our autopilot system on your aircraft of choice, understanding more about following and tracking VORs and using the ADF and the DME, and using all these systems together to correctly fly an aircraft. This video in itself has already gone on for, what, 40 minutes? And I believe it'll be going on for another 20 minutes or so before we actually land. We really are not far away though from our destination. Now at this point, since we don't really have to worry too much about this and we're looking at this VOR, as long as we stay in a straight line here, we should be okay. And we seem to be staying in a completely straight line. So I'm actually going to be tuning in the uh, next VOR that we need, which is the final VOR that we need, which is Gamston. So Gamston is 112.8. Uh, so let's tune in 112.8. And I want to see if this one actually is alive. It is alive. This is very good. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this set up on zero. This is going to be quite fun. So this is our last one that we're going to be needing, and then we're going to be switching to ADF and ILS. Now, Cranwell itself has these systems as well. Uh, we are going to be tuning in one of the systems. However, uh, at Cranwell, the system is a Vortac. It's called a Vortac, which means it's a, it's a military installation, and you can't actually get... Uh, unless you have specific equipment, you're not going to be able to pick up anything but the DME. So we are going to be using it for the DME. So this bottom nav, we're going to then switch to Cranwell, which is going to be 117.4. And that's going to give us DME information. And that's all we need. So getting quite nicely over the city of Nottingham now. We should be coming up to our turn. Uh, not too far from uh, where we are right now. And I can actually tell you what airport that is from charts, um, or I can actually tell you what airport it is by playing around with our VORs, because I can say, right, um, that airport, if it's Nottingham Airport, should be on the, something like the 113 radial. So if I switch this over to, say, 113, uh, 113, so no, that's not the airport, so I can tell you that now, uh, 88, 89, 90, in fact, you can see that's starting to move now. That was actually uh, Siverston Airport. So that was Siverston Airport that we just went over, which means that we are going to be very, very shortly on the 090 radial. Again, I'm going to do this manually. So I'll, I'll switch off uh, the autopilot just momentarily and then control it myself. Do that switch that without the aircraft turning immediately it's not that this aircraft is a little bit it does want to turn but anyway I have to turn the aircraft now anyway so I am going to begin that turn to the right nice and smooth once again keeping it very smooth we, are, we have lost some height in all of that but that's okay and we are pretty much lined up perfectly on our okay it's happened again
We'll manage it. We will manage it. On our VOR of choice. Now, I'll fight this aircraft for the next couple of seconds. And as a matter of fact, that might be Cranwell right ahead of us. In fact, that is Cranwell right ahead of us. I believe that is Cranwell right ahead of us. We're going to find out very, very shortly. Let's switch the autopilot back on. Get ourselves back on the heading that we want as this aircraft goes ballistic. And we'll find out very soon if that is actually... Uh, in fact, there, is, there are a couple it could be. It could be uh, Box and Heath. It could be Box and Heath. I'm not too sure. We're going to get ourselves back up and running. In fact, no, I think that is Box and Heath. Uh, but Cranwell should be in our sights any moment now. We'll get the aircraft down now to 2,000 feet. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to trim... I'm actually going to reduce the power ever so slightly to bring it down. I'm just going to trim for a bit of a descent. And at the same time, um, I don't need I don't need this anymore. I'm just waiting for this to come down and straight until we reach that intersection. There we go. That's actually going quite well. We're going to get ourselves down to 2,000 feet now, and I'm actually going to set up uh, the next one, which is a uh, 117. Point four, but we're not going to be using this because all it's going to do is give us uh, DME information. We're 19 nautical miles away from Cran Cranwell. There we go. That's what we needed to know. And we've started our descent. This is going well. And as soon as we cross that, we're going to then start using the ADF to fly directly towards the airport so you can see we're actually almost very close to the direction we need to fly to get to the airport and we're going to descend then once the airport is in sight we're going to descend in fact I think I can see the airport just over there just there looks like the airport uh, we're going to descend down to one and a half thousand feet and we're going to do a circuit around the airport and then land at the runway of choice so we're actually going to set up the ILS very very shortly and we're down to two and a half thousand feet so I'm going to trim and let the aircraft maintain this speed at two and a half thousand feet very smooth very easy and we have now Cross the 180 radial so we've done our intersection so we're going to turn now to actually fly directly to RAF Cranwell at this point I'm going to let the aircraft now descend very slowly to 2,000 feet as we try and get the airport in sight I think that is the airport directly ahead of us a house that might be the airport there's a an airport there we'll, we'll find out we will definitely find out it's directly ahead of us now and it is 15 miles away so we've got plenty of time to descend our aircraft as you can see we're doing 120 knots so that means that we're going to do our 15 miles in approximately well, we're going to be doing two nautical miles a minute so we're going to be doing that in seven minutes or so in fact there we go seven minutes on there six minutes now so in seven minutes time we're going to be over that we've got seven minutes if we're dropping speed at a hundred foot per minute we should be reaching two thousand feet within the next four minutes so we're actually going to bring that down ever so slightly and we're going to see if we can get down to 2,000 feet within the next four minutes. So this is now all going into landing procedures. Uh, we also are going to set 117.4 on here to give our distance. Like so. Switch that to nav 2 and now we're going to set up 109.7 on nav 1. 
and hopefully if that works that should be the ALS for uh, Cranwell now it may not work because of it being a military installation it may not give us the ALS but that's okay we're going to manage this and we're going to t we're going to loop around the airport we're going to join a circuit loop around and then land and that's going to be the end of this video which has already gone on almost an hour so this is an, a one hour tutorial hopefully you guys have definitely enjoyed that like I said we went through we, we managed to go and cover all this again but we also were looking actively at the VORs at how they worked at the ADF we were looking at how everything was working quite well so we, we have managed to cover a lot in this episode if you want to tune in the ADF to make sure we do have Cranwell uh, it's going to be dash dot dash dot dot dash dash dot dash dash dot so let's uh, give that a listen sounded about right so we'll switch this off we are 10 miles away from Cranwell that must be Cranwell so it looks like the runway heading is looking to be runway I believe it's 26 that we're landing at so we're going to join the base leg in a minute and then we're going to join a downwind leg very very shortly so as a matter of fact if we tune this to say to six this just makes it easier because it has markings on here and it just makes it easier for us if you if you don't want to be doing all the maths in your head if you're focusing too much on flying look you just tune that to two six and you can use this for your reference so we've got uh, three five zero 350? Yeah, 350 right there. We've got um, 080 and we've got 170. Of course, it is 27 is a very common one, so you just take away 10 all the, all the time. Seven nautical miles away, that looks like our airport of choice. The ILS have, hasn't come alive, so it looks like we're not going to be using an ILS today. What we are going to be doing though is we're going to be getting ourselves continuing the descent down to 2,000 feet but at this point we're going to join a base leg so I'm actually going to now put the autopilot off this is all going to be me flying now so we're now going to join a leg heading we're going to actually line ourselves up right here so we're going to start heading first of all at 170 we're about five miles from the airport at this point there we go we're now at 170 We are going to wait until the airport has moved just past us. I hope I haven't got the wrong airport. There's RAF Waddington around here as well. And now we're going to turn to a heading of 060. We have got a climb going on, so we're going to cancel that by just moving the stick down ever so slightly. That was my own fault. I wasn't looking where I was going. See, it's very important to look where you're going. There we go. Keeping that nice and smooth and coordinated. Two thousand feet. Heading, not 060, sorry, 080. There we go. And you can see there is the airport. 
The ADF needle is clearly pointing towards it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pass the airport and then we're going to we're going to wait until the ADF needle points to it being roughly 45 degrees off our bow uh, sorry not off our bow off our stern so stern is the back of the aircraft like a, like a ship bow and stern we can use the bow and stern for I suppose you don't want to say maybe we can say it'll be off our uh, port wing that might be the, a better way to say it you see we just continue flying this heading looks like the ILS is not active on this at this airfield so we're not going to be landing ILS we're going to do this the old-fashioned way which is by eye I was hoping that maybe the localizer would be working over here but it doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be working there is Cranfield I mean not Cranfield Cranwell I think yes no that is definitely Cranwell shouldn't second guess myself I know I know my airfields might be able to get a reading of the runways 08 and 26 good so what we're going to do at this point we're now going to start descending once again and slowing the aircraft down we're going to descend now to one and a half thousand feet as we drift this aircraft is has been Every time it does that weird juddery thing like it did earlier in this video, it starts pulling very significantly to the right. At this point, we also need to make sure that we put our mixture all the way rich and our propeller all the way up again. Like so. And that's going to obviously affect how, or it's going to have an effect on the aircraft's flight controls, but that's okay, we can just manage that. You see there is the airport we're going to continue until we are about four nautical miles away and then turn in and we should be able to do one swooping turn into that and if we can't do a swooping turn i'll tell you what we'll do we'll do something a little bit interesting to finish us off let's do something a little bit interesting we're going to turn to a heading of one one zero like this then we are going to prepare to swoop back so we're almost at a heading of 110 I am fighting a very strong right hand pull in this aircraft for some reason so you'll have to excuse me and we are at one and a half thousand feet we are three nautical miles away so final We'll wait for a few more seconds before turning in. And we'll continue descending the aircraft very slowly. 3.4, 3.5, let's get it turning. So now we're going to do a nice turn all the way around. And as soon as we finish this turn, our landing gear is going to go out. Our flaps are going to go down and we're going to bring this aircraft down at the airfield. hopefully you guys have really enjoyed this because I certainly have and we're going to try and get a full 30 degree turn going on here keep that rudder in keep the aircraft turning I've got it at 20 right now I want 30 there's 30 and we're lining up with runway 26 hopefully I've, I've planned this right oh okay I haven't planned it completely right so we're going to do a bit of a dog leg fine at this point uh, we're going to drop the gear that's going to let the aircraft slow down we're already on the glide slope so I've managed to get that glide fairly well or somewhat on that glide slope we're going to obviously reduce the power the aircraft is now dropping in speed 
got it down to the flaps limit almost. And one stage of flaps. And we'll bring this in for landing. 90 knots, very nice. Smoothly bring it in. It is low now, so we're going to just reduce our rate of descent massively. Obviously, as the aircraft slows down, you're going to have the rate of descent want to increase. But we're going to manage that, and look, we're almost back on the glide. You can see it's one white and three reds. We're looking for two whites and two reds. And this right-hand motion is really annoying me. There's the two whites and two reds bring that propeller, uh, bring that throttle down slightly again, bringing the aircraft in nicely at 90 knots, and we'll try and line up on the runway. You guys might have a better time of this than I do, I'll be honest. Whenever I want to show a tutorial, it just, it always has to go wrong, and it has been a very long tutorial, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed every moment of it. If you haven't, well, unfortunately that's going to be a bit of a problem. bring that right the way down passing the threshold now and gently idling there we go and touchdown is there and we're going to touch down slightly after and we're down and the aircraft is still pulling to the right for me but there we go thank you very much for watching please remember to hit the like button if you like this video subscribe to the channel for more videos on advanced the ground up advanced flight tutorials leave a comment in the comments box below let me know what you think hopefully you guys enjoyed that tutorial hopefully it gave you a really good idea and now you can go and do these for yourself and the stuff that i've told you if you go on sky vector you should be able to have a look at some charts of your local area you should be able to understand now what is what with the frequencies that i've supplied to you uh, with the names of airways that i've supplied to you and how to actually read those charts believe it or not even though i haven't shown you a chart you guys should now be able to read uh, parts bits and bobs of that chart enough for you to make your own flight so let me know in the comments box what flights you've been making and what intersections you've been passing through and how everything's been going in the next couple of videos we'll probably do a few more solo flights shorter than this one and then we're going to start looking at perhaps different types of instruments different types of aircraft uh, with pfds displays or glass cockpit displays so on and so forth thank you very much once again and do support me on patreon link to that is in the description box below and i will see you guys in the next episode or the next lesson of the ground up advanced flight tutorials